Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you. Number 12 now, part 12 of the build of this A20G Havoc from Hong Kong Models. And if you remember in part 11 we went on and fitted the Edward Photo Etch set, which is uh, very nice indeed. I've now got all the, the filling done in between these seams and got it painted. So you can see now how it looks when it's primed. And it does actually vastly improve the look of the plastic parts. However, having said that, when it's all together, you can't really see a lot of it anyway because you're going to be looking up in there. And we'll go into more detail in another video about what we're going to do. But what, you know, as you can see, when you look up in there, you can't really see a lot. But, you know, those holes at the top really do make the difference. And then when you look along the bomber, you've got all those holes in the side walls. So um, there's a lot, a lot of detail been added, but a lot of it is not very easy to see, especially if you've got your Bombay, Bombay doors closed. And then, of course, we've got these panels in here for the fuel tanks, which we talked about before. And then you could put your bombs in and you'll hardly see any of it then. But we're going to get we're going to paint it all green and pre-shade it and probably post shade it. We'll do some detail painting as well. Get all those lines all done and everything. And we'll see how uh, how sexy it looks when it's all done. So that's the uh, that's the sides taken care of. And then we've got here, we've got the roof. Now, if you remember when I did the roof, I was being careful not to sand too much off. And as you can see, like here, you can see it's a little bit baggy. So if you want to sand more off, you can get it to go down more. Um, but, you know, for what you're going to see, you're only ever going to really see it like that or like that. You're never going to really see it. So, you know, you, it, the, the, the detail is there and it all looks very nice. We've got bits of fibre pencil stuck in the paint there. Um, and it is all very nice, but, uh, you know, is it worth doing? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Um, I personally believe it is. I think it looks great. Would I do on another one? I don't know. It's a lot, a lot of work. It took me quite a few hours to do that. So, uh, it's down to you really guys on, on how far you want to go with your model. Um, but it does look very impressive. So, um, as you will know, I have made quite a fuss, just scratching my back, um, I've made quite a fuss about the fact that these are missing in the kit. These are the, these are the, the metal straps, you can see them here, they sort of go over there, what it is, it's like a shroud that goes around the gun, and as the gun goes up or down, it seals the gap left between the, the slot in the, um, in the, fret, in the, fret, in the, calf, in the cover, and the, uh, I think it's called the cupola, isn't it? Um, it fills the gap left in the slot between the cover and the actual guy inside. So it's just kind of a, a, a draft shield, really. I mean, if he has to turn his gun forwards and the plane's doing 180 mile an hour, it's not going to be very nice having a, you know, sort of four inch wide gap, <laughs> a foot tall in front of you with 180 mile an hour wind coming in at you. So, um, especially when it's probably like minus 59 or something. So, um... So I thought I'm going to make them because they are quite prominent. So this book is a complete and utter pain in the backside, guys. It's so big and heavy. You know, you're trying to, you just want to pick some up for a bit of reference and have a look. It's like, you know, find your one of the 519 pages you got to look for, and then there's no bloody colour images or anything. It's really, I wouldn't buy it again. Um, I've got the B25 book as well by William Wolfe. And I'll be honest with you, that's the same. It's just, it's great for someone who's interested in the A20 and what they did and everything and what countries use them and how many they had. But for reference material for modelers, it's not really very good at all. Um, the, the, the Wing Leader Photo Archive books are a million times better and like a third of the price. So there we go. So anyway, I've made them and here they are. So you can see them. There, I made a photo etch brass with a piece soldered onto them, and uh, they basically fit. This is going to be a nightmare now. This is all going to fall apart in front of me. Um, but I'm going to see if I can make these fit. I can't fit them properly yet because I want to get those bullets from gas or the rounds, should I say. I keep calling them bullets. I want to get those rounds from gas patch um, fitted before I fit these, so I can't really fit them permanently. So they're just going to go over the, the fronts of the guns like that. And then that is going to go into there. And watch it all just fall apart before your very eyes. Because it can't possibly go right on camera, can it? Oh, blimey, it has as well. And there they are. 
so they're not really strictly accurate don't worry about the fact that one's sitting higher than the other when the cut turret goes on it pushes them down um, now I haven't actually got the turret clear part out because I don't want to touch it as much you know, at least as I can the actual clear part because of the restrictions of the thickness of the plastic for molding you know we've got the border model Lancaster with very very thin clear parts but look at the problems we have with them so these are nice thick chunky parts and they're very very clear and they're beautifully molded as Hong Kong models clear parts always are they always are very very nice indeed for clearness um, but they are quite thick so due to that if you imagine the the real thing is 32 times bigger than this and it's probably I don't know three mil thick if that perspex so the, to be in scale these would have to be 0.1 millimeters thick and then you just touch them and they fall apart you, you can't mold clear parts 0.1 millimeters thick so they're they're too thick so basically they're going to push these down lower than they are in real life so if you look at a real life picture they don't really look they do look like that but then they, they sort of come up higher and everything because obviously if the clear part was thinner they would go out and up more so they're sort of bigger and more prominent but once you put the canopy on they look great and they really do notice that they're missing on the real thing so there we go so i've made them so i'm not only going to show you that i've made them i'm going to show you how i made them so i'm not sure if i've ever done any scratch building on the channel before um, i've also done the barrels ready um, i wanted to use i wanted to use these in the turret these are what gas patch finally sent me kindly sent me and these are the browning cow 50s and they are absolutely beautiful i'll just quickly show you one um what we're we doing they've got the handle on the back but that'll just be a case of cutting them off though i've looked in the book you see again this is where the book falls down it just says they're modified 50 cows in the turret <laughs> you know, i don't know what they are so um so they've got this handle on the back here so we just nip that off and fit them in but the trouble is as you can see here they are longer than the kit parts and that again is probably because of the thickness of the canopy so i've done a quick check by measuring and everything because i did start to try and break these off and fit them and then i thought hang on a minute are they going to fit and they won't physically fit inside the canopy now what you could do is cut some off the front or you could cut some off the back you could even cut a piece out of the middle and shorten them but if you're going to go to all this love this the trouble of having these beautiful you know 3d printed gorgeous guns in your turret why cut them about and make them inaccurate so i just thought i'd leave the plastic ones in there i mean they look okay they've got the photo edge on the top you know they're they are what they are um and as I say, they are made. They are made within the restrictions of injection molding. That's 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 the thing, um, and that's the trouble you're always going to come by. You know, like I say, if you look at those border model Lancaster turrets, yes, they are stunning. Yes, they are extremely accurate. Um, but you know, look at the problems people have had with the clear parts. They are extremely thin. Um, and they are very very brittle as well and you've got to be very very careful with them uh, and then at the end of the day we've got the you know we've got the lines in them we've got the the distortion in the surface so you know I, I'm, I'm lucky i've got a couple of sets so i was able to choose the best of the of the worst or whatever but um overall very happy with how it's all working out and i think this is gonna i mean i've seen one on a built model up at telford a couple of weeks ago and i think this is was last week wasn't it was it last week yeah um and and this is yeah this looks absolutely great other than the ones i saw people have painted this area here interior green and on all the photos i've seen it's definitely not interior green so check that out guys uh and let me know if i'm wrong so how are we going to make them this is the photo etch fret from the edward bombay set this is what's left okay so i've got a pcr i've cut off as well if you look around the fret and you measure it, we have sort of um, areas that I, I worked the, the 
it needs to be about three and a half mil thick. So this area along the bottom here is three and a half mil thick. And I'm avoiding anything that's got writing etched into it because when you roll it, it kind of makes it bend. Ask me how I know. So I've got a piece here already cut off. So I'm going to cut a piece off of here, just like so. Okay, now on here, there is a little, you can see it, there's a little tab where it's been cut off from the one, the one next to it. So what I'm going to do is just get my diamond file and file that away. I'll get rid of that little tab. Now you don't have to use obviously the Edward fret, you can just cut yourself some bits of brass or whatever or use the scraps off another fret, but it needs to be about three and a half mil wide. As I say, we're not going for ultimate accuracy here because the actual canopy won't allow it. So all we're doing is trying to represent something that's missing in the kit. So for that reason, you might decide it's better to not have it at all than have it there and be inaccurate. You know, it's your model, you make those decisions. You do what you want to do. But in case you want to make them, I'm going to show you how how I've done it. I, I never do a how-to video. I'll do a how I've done it video. And then some of you will come at me and say I, that doesn't work or you've done that wrong or whatever. But you know, hang on guys, I've just shown you how I do it. I haven't shown you, I haven't tried to tell you that what you've done is wrong. Um, you know, everybody each to their own. I get lots of opinions passed. Uh, about how I should be doing things and quite frankly some of them I've tried and they just don't work but um, a lot of them yeah they, yep do it that way I... okay so we've got our two pieces there and what we need is two pieces of brass 22 millimeters long now, if you're going to make these for this model you're going to make them for your J when you get it start taking some notes or bookmark the video so you can come back and watch it again so you want these pieces 22 millimeters long, but before I do that, I'm going to drill some holes in them. And that way I can drill the holes and then measure out from the center, rather than have to get the hole perfectly centered. So as you can see, I've previously come along here with my caliper set at 1.75, and I've just scribed the line in the center, okay? So just to check that's correct, we'll go 1.7, 0 0.74, that'll do. So I'm going to come from that side, in fact, let's do it on the other side. I'm just going to scratch a line there. I'm going to scratch a line there. If you do it from both sides, then you know you're good. Okay, this one's already done. I know this one's right. Okay, so if you do get two very fine lines like that, all you do is work between them. Okay, always go from both sides. Right, so we've done that bit. So now what we need is an old sanding stick. Where is an old sanding stick? Here it is. Um, and what I'm going to do is with my pointed tool, I've got loads of tools here, I've got it ready and I'm going to make a pit mark in there. Okay, so I'm going to get something harder. I'll grab my drills box. I'm just going to make a mark in that. Just like so, some roughly in the middle. Okay, so there we go, so that's that. Now, with our old, use an old sanding stick, it saves you uh, messing up anything else. We can just come in, this is a 0.7 drill, and just go in and drill that out. Okay, you might decide to use tools, if you do that's fine, but just be careful because it will suddenly catch and it will rip it out of your hands. So what I'm going to do now is be very, very careful doing this, guys. I'm using my finger as the backstop, and then as it comes through, I will feel it. I can feel it coming through. There we go. Don't worry about all the brass or distorting and everything. That doesn't matter at all. Go, just like so. Pull it through. And there we are. And then with my little three miller, three millimeter burr, I'm just gonna, if I can, deburr it. If it will let me, it's picking up on the, picking up on the raised edges and driving itself around rather than actually uh, removing the burr. It's 
better to use a drill actually. Right, okay, so they're drilled out roughly 0.7. So we can put that drill to one side. We put those calipers to one side. Now, um, what we can do is come in with our one point, I think this is a 1.1 millimeter drill, one millimeter less. You see, I've, I've opened it up to that size already. So, yeah, this is a one millimeter drill, and I've already opened it up with the uh, deburring action. So, what we'll do, we'll put that one away. I'm probably going to leave the camera on on this, so if you get bored, just hit the fast forward, the, the forward arrow, and it will take you forward in five second steps. You can see what I'm doing is drilling this out very slowly. Otherwise, if you try and drill too much at once, what happens is the the drill will just pick up and sort of corkscrew itself in. Okay, so deburr it once again. In fact, we'll use our two mil drill. Just deburr it once again. And the reason I deburr it is so that when you go in with the next drill, it follows the center. It doesn't catch on the edge and pull itself over. Okay, so now we're going to go in with a 1.6 drill. Going with our 1.6, and you can feel it. It starts to it it sort of rubs it, and then it just sort of cuts its way through. And that's what you want it to do. Just gently push it. You'll feel it rubbing, and all of a sudden, it will, there you go. See it snatches. And this is what will happen if you go to try and go too big a step. It will actually just rip the brass open rather than other than make a hole. Literally be like ripping a can open. Alright, so that hole you can see it's staying mostly in the centre. Now what I'm going to do now is grab something and just give that a quick roll just to dis remove any distortion from it. Okay, so that's got that nice and flat. So now we've done our 1.6 We've done our 1.2, so now we want to go, there's 2 mil. You can feel that rubbing, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with my, this is called a burr, you can get these on Amazon and everywhere you look. It's literally called a burr, B-U-R. You can get them in little sets, they're very cheap and they're, so much better than drills, especially for stuff like this, because it's it's almost like milling it away rather than trying to chop it away with a drill. And as you will see in a second, you see I couldn't get that drill through just now. There we go. So that's two mil. So again, we'll deburr this one. Just pushing that tool into there. As you notice, it's not cutting my finger or anything because it's not that sharp and we can just get that one in there and there we go open that out to two mil as you can see that's really distorted it and that's what happens when you try and drill too much at a time so just flatten it again same with that one flatten it again right so now it needs to come out to 2.4 so it fits over the front of those guns so i'm going to use this tool to get it out to 2.4. I do have a 2.4 drill, but I haven't got it here next to me. So rather than turn the camera off and find it, I'm just going to do it this way, I think. Okay, so they should now, I shouldn't put this away, should I? They should now fit over the front of these guns. Okay, we'll have to keep going. I'm going to have to get that drill out back in a sec. Okay, so they're drilled out now. Um, and basically what we want to do is just fit over the front of those breeches like that. They don't need to be a tight fit or anything. Because um, we're going to glue them in place. So you've got all this, this radius under here you can see for it to fit into. And again, it doesn't matter where you've positioned your guns. You may have positioned your guns at a bit of an angle. If you make these 22 millimeters long, you'll be fine. So, um... Right, so we've got that now, so we can just basically push that down flat, and now we've got it flattish. The bench is covered in bits of brass. So, we'll just give that a quick roll just to flatten it out. Right, so now, 
we know we want 22 mil and those holes are about 2.4 so if we set our caliper to 10 millimeters okay and then we come along to the edge of that hole and just mark a line we know then that we're central about the hole. That's why I've done this after doing the hole rather than beforehand. Because if you get the hole slightly out, you've got to start again. Whereas doing it this way, you're laughing. So I've got a pair of, these are Euron and these are PE cutters. Now if you notice, these are like a scissor action. Okay, they're, they're like this, they're cutting and they give you a much cleaner cut than if you use something like this, which is a, a nipper action. And also these aren't designed to cut brass so these are actually designed for cutting PE so we can come in here we can line that up look at it so it's nice and square just nip the end off same over here get it lined up on that line that we've described get it square cut the end off line it up on that line Again there, whoops. And then just cut the end off. And then with a diamond file, I'm going to come along and just literally clean the end up just to take away any sharp edges. And then put a nice little radius on there. Like so. That's that done. Same on this one. Now one end of this is going to be buried deep down in the turret and the other end is going to be up in the air underneath the glazing so you have to pick your best end and see which you like the most. See which has got the best finish, see which has got the most even radius, see which is the least scratched or the most square or whatever. But as you can see when you put these together they are perfectly aligned and they are the same because remember if you get them wrong then they'll be looking like that in the top of your tower. You want them to be both looking the same, not like this. So there we go. Right, so we've finished now with those cutters for now. We'll get these little bits of brass here. Try and pick those up whenever you can, because if they're in the carpet and you happen to stand on them with bare feet, ouch. Ask me how I know. Um, so there we are. And what I'm going to do now is just with a pair of pliers, I'm just going to pinch these ends just to make sure they're nice and flat. Sometimes when you cut, they can kind of just twist on themselves. So we'll get our old sanding stick back. Here it is here. And we'll put these down on the sanding stick. And we will roll them. And we will literally go right off of each end. Okay? Don't ever do this. Because you'll end up with flat ends. Go right off the end. And then go right off the end. That way you get a constant radius all the way around. You can see there, got a nice radius all the way around. Otherwise you get flat. If you, I'll show you on this one, exaggerated. If you don't go right to the ends, you get that. You can see on there, you've got that ends flaring out and that one's pointing over there. Whereas if you go right to the ends, just like so. You get this constant, this constant radius. Now the radius isn't that important. Okay, I've got that so that when I measure it, I mean, if you're going to have a go at making these yourself, that is 15 millimeters when I measure across there. So that's a rough guide. When you put it all together, it's all going to get crushed up anyway. You want that to happen. You want it to be too big so that the canopy pushes it down, and then it sit there nice and tight up against the gap there forevermore. Um, so that's that done. So now we've got to make the little side supports. There's these little, uh, where are these here? You've got these little supports on here that are soldered on. So we're going to make them. So, I'll put those guns away. Um, let's go back to our fret. Let's kind of find a couple of narrow bits. Uh, do, 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 let's, let's look at quite a nice size there. So we'll, what we'll do, we'll cut that off of there, there. There, there. 
I'll cut that off of there there <laughs> and then what we can do is just now the length of these is really unimportant but I will I will measure them let's get these little cutters here just to get that little tiny brass nub off of there um, and then I'm going to grab my diamond file and just sand it away or file it away should I say and there we go so I'm just going to cut off a piece what should we say oh come here bro we'll cut off a piece I don't know 12 millimeters long so 12 millimeters long actually I'm going to cut that end nice and square so it looks better Okay, so we'll we'll go 15 mil long, and then we can always trim it after, can't we? We can cut that off there about 15 millimeters long. As I say, it's just about. It doesn't matter because the bottom end is just hanging around in the wind. It's not doing anything. Okay, so that could come up to there like that, and then that piece there is waste. Okay, so that's all done. And then again with our little diamond file, just clean the ends up so they're nice and square. I so say one end's going to get chopped off anyway, but if you just do both ends, it doesn't mean you have to keep looking. You can see on this one, it's all where I've cut it off the fret. It's sort of distorted. So all I do is come over the pair of pliers and just squeeze it and sort it all out. I wouldn't recommend annealing for this because it'll make the brass very soft. A lot of people ask about annealing and you only really anneal brass if you want it to be flexible and find its own form. So if like it's a pair of seat belts and whenever you try and push the seat belts down onto the seat they just spring back out like that. If I annealed this brass I would push that down and it would stay there it would just be like a piece of lead. So that's why you anneal. You don't just anneal just for the sake of it and I've seen people unbelievably on YouTube and they show you how to anneal brass and I've seen them literally put get a big sheet of a sheet of tile like a floor tile or something they put their fret down their, their whole fret of photo which down like this and they got a blow lamp say this is your blow lamp and they've gone they got us annealed what you're doing absolutely nothing. I've done lots of annealing on video. Go back and have a look. You don't just anneal by just flashing over that. And I wouldn't recommend ever doing the whole fret because for one, um, you know, if you've got, say in here, you've got a tiny little piece of wire or something like a, a piece of cable for the undercarriage bay or something, and you're trying to anneal the whole fret, you're going to melt that away before this fret here even starts to change colour. So it's much better if you're going to do your kneeling and kneel the parts individually. You cannot get a blow lamp and go, that's annealed. No, <laughs> no. So there we go. Right. So we are cracking on nicely with these. Um, now here I have a pair of reverse tweezers. I've cleaned the ends up so they don't do any contaminating. What I'm going to do is... Just look on here where they are about two and a half, three millimeters wide, and it's about there. Okay, and this is literally how accurate this needs to be. So I'm going to put that in those tweezers there, give them a squeeze, and just bend that down. Okay, that should do. And then what I'll do is I'll get this one. bend this one the same again it doesn't need to be accurate you're never going to see it. it's going up underneath um, and we're going to be pulling it about anyway afterwards to get it to go uh, to an angle so what I'm doing now is I'm putting this in these tweet in these pliers just pulling that onto an angle like that and then this one, I mean, you could do all the bending and everything in the pliers if you want to. I'm going to pull back that way. Okay. 
and the reason for that is I want this when it goes in to be angled forward so this one's going to go on this side so I'm going to grab this with these tweezers put that like that and I want it to be angled forward okay now we're going over the top to start with and then we can pull it back afterwards but um, in fact that is a little bit too much on there actually so let's just pull it back a bit now I'm going to put this on here get it roughly in the right place that is not at all in the right place <laughs> so what we can do now is with tweezers we can move that back just take some of the clamping force off that was twisting around this is camera on syndrome here guys <laughs> oh dear I've done this as you, you can see, I've already done it twice. So I'm going to put this on here. So this is obviously the left-hand one. Oh dear, dear, dear. That's a bit better. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still about a mile out. There we go. It's fallen into place on its own. There we go. So that's gone in there like that. It's nice and flush on the outside edge. It's square across there. So we can move the clamp right over to the inside edge. All right. So we can see on there the outside edge of that bracket is flush with the outside edge of here. That bit there is square to the end. We need that square to the end. So now we can solder that. So I'm just going to get my soldering iron ready and I'll be straight back. Right, tips all nice and clean. We're all ready to go. So looking good. So I've got my solder ready. I've got my liquid flux. Just going to drop some liquid flux into there. Make sure it goes into the joint. And then I'm going to come along with my soldering iron and then just grab a tiny little bit of solder onto there and then just dab it onto there and hopefully that will go in capillary into that joint I'm just going to put some more flux on there because it doesn't seem to be wanting to have fun so I'll grab a tiny bit more solder So now what we can do is move our tweezers to the outside, hold the outside edge, it'll drop more flux, and then we can just get a bit more solder on there and just touch it on the outside there. And as you can see, that's gone in lovely. And we can clean the iron off if you want to put some heat on the back. That should help everything shift around. There we are. So that's on there. It's nice and solid. We can use our diamond file or probably best use an old sanding stick because the solder will clog your file up. Just remove the excess from there. I shouldn't have put all that solder on the back of there. That's my fault. But you can see how easy it is to remove. There we go. Just quickly sand down the outside there. And that's it, job done. Sand that outside edge. And there is your shroud, and that will fit. What I can do is come along now again, and just with the end of this, just roll that out just to get some radius back in it as I say it's not really a massive issue you can see this is the left hand one so that's going to pop over the front of that gun there that piece there is just going to sit down the side and then when it goes into the 
actual turret because the camera's on it's just going to fall off <laughs> as per bloody usual okay so that can stay there like that that can go on there like that and there you go you can see now that's sitting on there just like the real thing all right so we'll get the other one done so we've got a left and now we've got to make sure we make a right so this one's got to go come here this one's got to go the other way around so we've got to somehow hold this <laughs> this is fun hold this get the oh come on Right, so we need to position it now with the tweezers, move it about until it's about in the right place. It definitely needs to go over to the edge. There we go. And then I'm just going to check with this one to make sure they're about the same length away from the end. And they are. Just going to square that up a touch, get some flux on it. And then clean the soldering iron, a drop of solder on there, touch it on the end. That's that together. And then move the clamp out to that end. A little bit more flux. more solder on there and then there we go I just want to come back into this end get that solder to go under a bit better whatever there we are and then once again we'll come along we'll clean the top up just remove any excess solder I do have a fiberglass pencil as you all know but I try to avoid using it where I can because whenever you use them, the little fibers come out and they go everywhere and they get stuck in your hands for days later they're horrible bloody things but um maybe I've just got a faulty batch of fiber pen ends or something I don't know but Whenever, every time I use it, for days, I'm feeling little bits of the fibres sticking in my hands. Where they, they go everywhere. And you must be breathing them in, which can't be good either. So uh, there we go. Now you can see that one, here, that one there is probably tweaked in a bit too far. So we can just grab it and just pull it out. Just like so. And it will, it will twist and bend to what we want it to do. Right, get it back on the on the on the uh, sanding stick again, and just roll it. Get the form back, bend that arm in, and then we will see that this one also fits on the right hand side, just like so. And then when we put it into our turret, here we go. It's going to plane up. Just like that. There we are, you can see that one's in there as well now. And as you can see, it wants to pull it off because it's pushing it from underneath. It's pushing it below the barrel. So what it's doing is... Okay, so there we go. So that's the set now ready, made for my JK. So I am now going to go and soak those in white vinegar to clean them. And then I will put them into my photo etch burnishing fluid from MIG Ammo. This is actually an Ushi van der der Rosten product. Um, and put it in for about three or four minutes, take it out, mop it off, let it dry, rub away any excess, put it back in three to five minutes, take it out, let it dry. 
do that two or three times. Don't do what I did last time. Um, I put some barrels in and I thought I'll leave them overnight. And the next morning I had no barrels left. They were gone. So bear that in mind. So um, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. What I'm going to do now is put my soldering iron away. And something I've learnt from checking out soldering stuff on YouTube is... And a lot of people tell me to try solder paste. Whenever I talk about soldering, they try so they say try solder paste. It's brilliant. I have solder paste here. I have this one here, the 138, and I have the their solder balls, and I have the 179. They are awful. I can't get on with them at all. Um, they're, they're, I find them a lot more messy than than using solder. And actually, if you watch plunging fire scale models great channel there's a lot of soldering on there and I think his jobs that he does with ordinary solder are a lot neater than when he uses the solder paste so um, he's much better at it than I am I can assure you of that so um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is get my soldering iron ready to be left now you can see here this area here is brown if I wipe it off in the distilled water can see it becomes very bright this is set to 400 degrees I'm just going to hold it I'm going to leave the camera going and you can watch that turn brown see it's starting to turn brown and that is oxidization I learned this again from from plunging scale models plunging fire scale models um, you can see that starting to change color and what's happening is it's it's oxidizing so to protect it I've just got some cheap, he says, it's here somewhere, there it is in the bottom of the box. I've just got some cheap solder. This is like the cheap generic stuff you get. And I'm just going to put some of that on there. Okay. Don't go breathing in that smoke, it can't be good. Alright, and let that go on there and that will... It's tinning the iron basically. And that will basically protect it. Get some on the end as well. If you get enough on there and let it get hot enough, it will roll around. There we go. You can roll it around. And let gravity do its thing. And there we go. That's, that tip is now completely covered except for that bit there. That tip is completely covered in solder and yeah it looks a mess but the beauty of that is it's it won't oxidize and when I want to use it again all I'll do what I do is hold turn it off now and let the temperature drop, drop out of it so that it goes hard you can see it's still soft let the temperature go out of it then it goes hard and then um Next time I come to use it, I'll just, in my wire wall pad, which you can see is full of bits of solder, just stuff the end of the nozzle in there. It will get the, um, it will get the, the solder off and then start again. So, but I think when I did that video before, I had some issues with the solder going in. A lot of people said I put the flux in the wrong side. I don't think you noticed. Um, it wasn't a solid piece. The, the piece I was soldering had a slot in it. So if you can imagine cutting a slot down the middle of here and then folding it over. It doesn't matter which side you put the flux because it's an, it's an open slot. That's why I was soldering it. So um, it wasn't like a fold. It, it wasn't just a fold. I'm, I'm not that stupid that I put the flux on the back side. Um, I, just, I put the flux on the back side of the slot because I wanted it to come through the slot. I didn't want to put it on the front because basically the solder will go wherever you put the flux. So I didn't want the solder to go all over the face. It was actually on this piece here, wasn't it? It was along there. And um, I didn't want the solder to go all the way along the face. I think it was on that piece there. And, uh, yeah, I didn't want it to go all, all, all over the place. I just wanted it to stay in the slot, which is why I put the flux in from behind. Anyway, enough waffling. I'm going to go and get the um, get these now in some vinegar. And then we'll get them in the blackening fluid. In the meantime, we'll call that a day for part 12 and I will see you all for part 13 where we will continue with the Bombay. What I would like you to tell me guys is 
what should I do? Shall I put all of this in and cover it all up, put the bombs in and everything? Or shall I just leave it completely empty? Because, I mean, you've got these end plates going here as well, like that. So that's going to cover in... You've got that one going in there. You've got that one going in there. So you can imagine, when you put it all together, you're just not going to see anything at all. Yeah, you can see something like that is going to be. It's going to be something like that. So when you look up inside, you're not really going to see anything in the middle whatsoever. You've got a bulkhead in the middle as well. Um, you have bombs going across here. What do you reckon, guys? Let me know in the comments below. Should I just leave it empty? Shall I just put the bombs in like it doesn't have the additional fuel tanks? Let me know what you think. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.